America sure is a nation of hot and cold. Some people like guns, some hate them. Some people work hard, and many of us don't want to work at all. Some people love our president, and some think he's a real jerk. It's never a dull day in America. Within the USA, there's some really lousy places to live and some super great places to live. Even in some large cities, there's a safe side of town and a rough side of town. In our last video, we talked about the worst places you could live in America. Unfortunately, New Mexico came in as a winner and undoubtedly, the residents who live there took it really rough. In this video, we're gonna tell you where the best states to live are. And I'm sure many of you are gonna say, my state wasn't mentioned, but I love where I live. To that, I would say, great, good for you. Just like the video so we can get more views, would you? Now, we can make a pretty good guess as to which states we say are the best. They're the places where crime is lower, there's better jobs, and where the best Mexican food is. So grab a taco and turn up the volume as we visit America's best states to live. As we come in for our first landing, we look out the window at the awesome state of Iowa, where it's early morning. Here in Iowa, that means breakfast at one of many awesome diners where Iowans love to gather and eat with one another. That's the type of place Iowa is. Good-natured, hard-working Americans, most of them anyways. The numbers show it. Iowa has the nation's lowest unemployment rate at less than 3%. That means if you don't have a job in Iowa, it's because you don't want a job, not because there aren't things for people to do for work. Iowa's economy's been pretty steady. One leading news site said Iowa has the nation's 10th best economy. Iowa also ranked first in the country for cost of doing business, which means low taxes and lower than average utility costs. Other factors that make Iowa super chill, it's relatively affordable, and it ranks outside the top 10 for cost of living. What's not so picture perfect for Iowa? It ranks 16th in terms of safety, which isn't great, but not amazing either. What are they stealing out there, corn? Iowa also ranks as one of our nation's most boring states too. Iowa is all mom jeans and flip phones. Actually, some of the cooler Iowa women wear ripped mom jeans. It's a little boring, but overall, Iowa's pretty great. We spent a day here. We hardly saw any bums, and we were welcomed over for dinner, where we were told God loves us over corn pudding. Look, there's an island. Let's set the plane down there. It's Rhode Island, our ninth best state to live in America. It's lunchtime, so maybe we should have some of Rhode Island's famous lobster. Now here in Rhode Island, the statistics are pretty solid. This is the ninth safest state you can live in based on violent and property crimes per capita. It's also ninth in terms of residents who have medical coverage and 13th in terms of secondary education. What's also interesting about Rhode Island is it's the second most densely populated state in America. Some might say that's bad and they want wide open spaces. However, Rhode Island's commute times are about average, nothing like in nearby New York and New Jersey. That means while there's people all over the place here, it's not overly crowded. Howdy, fellow Rhode Islander. I guess the only bad part about living here would be the amount of gossip in town. You can bet if you get a DUI, a lot of people will find out about it. Did you know Rhode Island has more donuts per person than any other state? That's right, Mappy. I had heard that before. There's donut shops everywhere here. Sounds like you can get practically any type of donut on your short drive to work each day. So Rhode Island has a lot to boast about. On this trip, we ate some awesome clam cakes, gossiped about everyone in town, and met some pretty smart people. Bye, Rhode Island. We don't even have to fly to our next date, so let's just hop in the Subaru and head west for a few hours until we get to New York. Remember in the 80s when New York City was a complete dump? There was trash, graffiti, and crack everywhere. Then Mayor Giuliani came in and cleaned the place up. Now, New York is ranked the 12th safest state in the nation. And New York City is totally safe, clean, and fun again. Now that's not all that's great about the state of New York. It ranks 8th highest for income levels, so there's a lot of opportunities for growing your career and or opening new businesses. And New Yorkers are a smart bunch, ranking 10th in the nation on education metrics annually. However, one thing that brings New York down is the high cost of living. As a whole, New York ranks second to last for affordability. A lot of that is because it costs like $5 jillion to rent an apartment downtown. Much of New York, though, is wide open spaces. This is what they call upstate. Did you know New York was voted as the best state for bagels? However, New York also has the highest number of food poisoning cases in the nation. As we depart New York, we're pretty pleased. We walked away with some cool trinkets, ate some amazing food, and didn't even get sick. 
Our next flight leaves out of JFK, because who the hell flies out of LaGuardia, as we begin a short trip to the Midwest. Today, we stop off in Minnesota, where luckily, it's winter. Yes, sure, the weather here can be a real nightmare. Minnesota winters were actually voted as the worst in America. There's long stretches in Minnesota when you're trapped at home. Snow day, anyone? But what makes this huge expanse of a state so great? First of all, Midwest values, pal. Minnesota has a stereotype across America as being a place where people are nice. Minnesota nice, they say. They're actually not really that nice. They're just being pleasant and polite to each other. But we'll take fake nice over mean any day. Overall in Minnesota, people work pretty hard and have good values. The unemployment rate's the fifth lowest in America, and for darn good reason. There's pride in work in Minnesota, at least outside of North Minneapolis. Minnesota has the nation's fourth lowest poverty level. And did you know Minnesotans have the best credit of all Americans? Minnesota thinks it should be first in America. That's a little aggressive, Minnesota. You're pretty cool, but not that cool. As we depart Minnesota, we're reminded that back home where we live, it's much warmer. But at least we got to try some ice fishing, great coffee, and didn't even hit a deer on our way to the airport. We'll be back to the Midwest again. We're taking a red eye from Minnesota to our next best state to live, Vermont. People in Vermont are like, stop saying we're awesome. We don't want any more people moving here. Sorry, Vermont. It's just that you're so likable. Vermont's home to the hippie libertarians who drive Subarus and eat grass. But Vermont hippies aren't the lazy, unproductive types you might think. Only three other states outwork Vermonters, and they earn above average salaries in this state too. Where's the second safest state in America? Vermont is. The only other safer place to live in America is right next door in New Hampshire. There were only 10 murders in Vermont in all of last year. In Chicago, that many people got shot at one party. Did you know Vermont has the least number of fast food restaurants? Interesting point, but for many Americans, I'm sure they would think that was a bad thing. Vermont also ranks as the third best place for health insurance too, which means people here are healthy as a clam stuck in the mud. Now, some people like diversity, but you won't find that here. It's practically all white people in Vermont. That means the culture here is very one-sided. Goodbye, Vermont. We'll miss you. We're going to have a good next flight as we drink the syrup and eat the ice cream we got there. Can I get a burrito over here, somebody, please? We're coming in for a landing back in the Midwest again, this time in the state of Wisconsin, home of cheese and cheese. They're certainly not the healthiest bunch we're going to visit. However, there's a lot going on in Wisconsin these days, in case you didn't hear. Of the nation's best cities to raise kids, about one in three are here in the beer state. The fun comes naturally, great fun for the family. There's so much to do, so much to see. Day and night is the place to be, Wisconsin. How can you not think Wisconsin is the best state after watching that? It's just across the board generally at least above average in every category we looked at. It's pretty safe there, and people work hard. In terms of quality of life, not bad. Things to do, sort of boring, but not too bad. Education, pretty good. If Wisconsin was a sports team, I guess they'd be in the playoffs every year. Most people would say racial equality is a good thing. However, not here. In Wisconsin, blacks are three times more likely to be out of work, and blacks are 11 times more likely to be locked up. I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? That was Rodney King, everybody. It's a pretty state, Wisconsin is. Minnesota says they're the land of 10,000 lakes, but in fact, actually, that's a myth. Wisconsin actually does have 10,000 lakes. Google it. We leave the Midwest once again with promises that we'll be back one more time. What a blast. We drank practically the entire time and with total strangers. We have plenty of snacks to tide us over as we come in for a landing in the state of Connecticut. Oh, why do I feel this way? Must be the money. Does money make a place a good place to live? Well, it certainly doesn't make it a bad place to live, that's for sure. And money is what Connecticut has. A little bit ago, we called it the fourth richest place in the nation. Connecticuters are also very educated. There's only three other states with bigger brains than here. In terms of crime, Connecticut's the 10th safest in America, and it's sixth lowest overall for violent crimes. However, they're certainly not spending all that money on the roads, nor are the highways in Connecticut safe. The pothole state was voted as having the nation's worst roads. Half of them are considered in disrepair at any given time. 
There's a big gap between the rich and poor in Connecticut though. Drivers can be selfish, and the wealthy people here are sort of snobby. However, the state has great schools and great hospitals. I guess you just have to have thick skin to live here. Plus, we discovered that if you like people with fresh breath, Connecticut is your place. Connecticuters have the cleanest teeth in all the land. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepso did. Okay, we just upgraded to first class so we could fly in style to our next destination. While in Connecticut, we picked up this nice watch and somebody handed us a new toothbrush. Felt good to live in the 1% though for about 55 seconds or so. Our next stop is truly an island paradise. We're heading to Hawaii. Come visit us in Hawaii. The great proud birds of Continental Airlines will bring you here in the very nicest way. Man, are all the women in Hawaii sexy hula girls? Oh, darn. There's lots of things that make Hawaii a great state. Hawaii got an A-plus by CNBC for its latest quality of life score, citing clean air, a ton of things to do, and really low crime rates. Plus, there's rainbows everywhere, and amazing beaches, and holy crap, look at all the Mexican food. That's what I've been waiting for. Rosarita knows a better way to cook. Yeah. Rosarita knows a better way. There's so many Mexican restaurants within a short drive of Honolulu that you wouldn't even be able to pick. It's expensive to live in Hawaii, sure. Home prices are the highest in the land. The average Hawaiian home costs $690,000? What the, what the? I guess you get what you pay for, though. There's beauty around every corner, and most residents live a healthy, safe life, according to the numbers. Did you know people in Hawaii sleep the least amount each night? No, I didn't know that. But isn't it time for you to take a nappy mappy? Sadly, it's time to leave island paradise for good. But we got laid and saw a volcano burn a house down, so that was cool. We're heading back to the Midwest one more time as we land in Nebraska, the land of corn and corn and corn and corn. Corn, anyone? All right, it's supper time here in Nebraska, so we're likely gonna be sitting down with Ma and Pa, enjoying a meal of corn, creamed corn, corn pudding, corn gravy, corn jello, corn flakes, and probably a big old steak. That's what Nebraska people eat, right? Anyway, despite the fact that I haven't actually been in Nebraska, I can say that when I read about it for five minutes and measured all the stats, I'd give Nebraska a big fat A. Here's why. Commute times are basically nothing. Practically everyone has a job here. People are nice and fat and always seem like they're in a good mood. Nebraska's ninth for infrastructure and ninth for quality of education. And I read on Wikipedia that Nebraska kids have the highest graduation rate in America. For every yin, there's a yang though. Your farmhouse might get jacked up by a tornado any given afternoon, that sucks. And Nebraska isn't necessarily the most interesting place to live if you actually wanna do fun stuff. And you might find out one day your wife is actually your cousin. Just kidding, that's West Virginia. What an interesting evening in Nebraska where they fed us so much corn we pooped a whole cob. Now as we recover from that unsettling moment, we make our final arrival in America's finest state, at least for now, New Hampshire. Oh look, New Hampshire guy is driving his truck around doing New Hampshire stuff. New Hampshire just kicks butt in many ways. To start, crime is the lowest in the country. When you look at the number of people killed in each state, it's pretty telling. California is way up here, and New Hampshire is way down here. There's 130 times less violence in New Hampshire. New Hampshire also has the nation's least number of people living in poverty. That's a sign people are self-reliant and independent. Two things we support on this YouTube channel. It doesn't cost an arm and leg to live here. People are really educated and pretty healthy. The only setback for youth is the high cost of getting a college degree. But there's a lot of jobs in the area when you're done. The unemployment rate here is basically zero. No place is perfect. And while there's no income tax here, property taxes are through the roof though. Overall, if you live in New Hampshire, you're likely a pretty happy camper. There's certainly way worse places you can call home, that's for sure. Same goes for the other states we talked about today. Now, a while ago, we talked about the worst states in America, and there's a link to that video at the end of this video. Overall, New Mexico, Arkansas, and Mississippi won that contest. Hopefully, they can turn some things around there and try to be on par with the states from this good list. That's it. We take off from New Hampshire, and we venture out to our next destination, where we'll find something else to make fun of people for. Hey guys, if you learned something new or you just like this video, make sure to like it. And if you really like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get all of our videos about what it's like to live in different places in America. Peace.